Thank you so much for staying with us and welcome back from that very short break. It's time for the Twitter jabs. My name is Agi Uwase. And yes, um, just like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about productive holidays for children. Now, we all know that children are on holiday right now. Um, the last batch of, uh, you know, the, the students who are doing um, uh, exams, you know, ended is rather ending today because today is the 9th of December. But those do not, you know, um, subscribe as children. They're not really children. So we are going to be talking about children, especially, you know, people who go to primary school, talking about kindergarten. And yes, given the fact that schools closed on the 25th, of uh, November 2022 earlier than expected so they are definitely going to be having a long holiday so as a parent out there um, the importance of this conversation is to give you some advice on how you can ensure that your child has a productive holiday uh, beat them <coughs> doing the holiday package you know um, keeping their morals in check like I mentioned before and also enjoying the Christmas holiday and uh, yes if even social capital comes in handy you know your children playing with the children who go to different schools learning a few things here and there so we are going to be having an in-depth analysis into it and joining me this morning is uh, Miss Jemima Agwang, who is a counselor with the Pink Bee Foundation. And we also do have uh, Miss Millie Tumwebaze, who is a counselor as well with the Pink Bee Foundation. Good morning, ladies, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, Agi. Um, I'll start with, uh, before we get into the conversation, I'll start with you, uh, Miss Jemima. I'd like you to, you know, tell us about Pink Bee Foundation and what it's all about. Yes, thank you, Agi. And hello, viewers. Um, Pink Bee Foundation is a non-government organization. Non organization. Uh, we deal with kids in schools, children and kids, uh, young kids and teens. Uh, this foundation uh, is based on, uh, we, we deal with children, uh, seeing them in school. We also look at uh, the upbringing of these children, uh, mentorship. We also do counseling and guiding because uh, we, we find out most of the times, uh, most parents don't have time for the children. Uh, what they do is pay school fees and just send them to school, send them to school, kids go to school, come back home. But these children have a lot of issues they need to discuss and they need people close to them. Mm. So this is where we come in, look at, the, look at their issues, talk to them. Because um, actually, uh, we've gone to several schools uh, we talk to them about education. We also talk to them about uh, their talents because most of these children have hidden talents. Some of them have talents they know about, but they cannot come out to speak because most of the times whenever they try to come out and say, Mommy, I can sing or Daddy, I can dance, uh, parents shut them down because mm -hmm. what parents know today is books. Mm -hmm. Please study, please study. but. Uh, um, these children also need to nurture their, their talents, so this is where Pink Bee Foundation comes in. Uh, and then we also look at uh, girl child. Okay. Girl child goes to school, but girl child has a lot of challenges along the way. Uh, we, we, we have also noticed children nowadays, uh, during our times, honestly, we would go to these changes when we have advanced to secondary and what. But now, surprisingly, you find a P3 child mm. has started their periods. And they're very clueless about this. And as, as parents, we think they're still young. But these children are already uh, experiencing these changes and they cannot come out to speak. Mm. Yeah, so this is where Pink Bay Foundation comes um, in. That's a very commendable work that you're doing. And of course, definitely speaking about the children who like get their menstrual periods in primary three, we do have challenges in the education sector in this country. And you find that a teenager is actually their primary three. So that is how, you know, the menstrual period comes in and they have no idea how to go about it. But we'll be getting into that. But now to start with, I would like to know what's the best way that children um, can have, you know, a productive holiday. I'll start with you, Ms. Millie. Thank you so much. Hello, viewers. Uh, children to have a productive holiday, I think they should have to do some work at home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have helpers in the house, but 
children should also come in. This is the right time for children to come in and do some work in the house. And uh, they, should, they shouldn't depend only in their book, on their books, mm. but they should also take working at home, very important. Mm. Yeah. They should come in. Uh, this is the time when our helpers in our homes should be at leave. These children should come in and help with work. They should know, you find a home when children don't know even how to, to, to peel, how to cook. But it is very important for these holiday makers to know what to do. I think this is the right time for our children to learn mm. that. That is, um, mm. I agree with that. You know, sometimes mm. children go on holiday and um, yeah. it's actually practically a holiday. They mm. never do anything. So. Like they sleep yeah. for longer hours. Mm. Mm. This is time when a child sleeps and then they, they wake up at 10. I don't think that is right. Mm. Really. What is right? What I think would be right is, mm -hmm. um, yes, have enough sleep because they've been waking up so early during school times, given mm. now our children go in shuttles. As early as five, kids right. are getting into cars to go to school. That is mm. too early, given our times. Mm. But uh, still, give them time to sleep. I think if a child slept for six to eight hours, that is enough time for a kid to rest. Mm. By at least eight latest, this child should be getting up. And then, uh, have something to do always, like a routine, okay? Today, um, you, you could say, let's say I, I have three kids in my house, I have three children, mm -hmm. so I, I allocate them things to do. Now, Alvin, today, or tomorrow, I tell them the previous day, tomorrow, Alvin, you're the one sweeping the compound, so they know when they get up from bed, after shower and everything, they get out and sweep the compound. Mm. Then I can say, Enzo, today it's you to clean the house. So Enzo cleans the house. And then Kim will do something else. I can say, Kim, it's today your turn to wash the utensils and she mm. will go and clean the dishes. So even with the house help in the house, he may not go or she may not go on leave, but at least they are relieved from some of these uh, house chores, like yeah. those small, small things, just mm -hmm. to keep our children running and also learn the basics of life. Because you can't just bring up a child who is in books. Yes. Mm -hmm. We know today you cannot just be with books, books, books. We also need other, uh, mm. to venture into other uh, duties. Cause okay, yes. Now, speaking of children um, having to be involved in house chores and doing some work, I yes. know that that is very good, yes. but I will not forget to mention the fact that um, some parents take advantage of the holiday to overwork their children. Absolutely. We have seen situations where even when there could actually be a maid at home or yes. maybe none at all, mm -hmm. and also we've seen um, issues of step-parents having to give a lot of work to their stepchildren. Yes. And yes. also sometimes you find a child has a lot of work to do since morning all the way to evening. They mm -hmm. have no time to play, they have no time you know, for themselves. Mm -hmm. So what would you say about that issue? No, that is really wrong. It is not, uh, we should not take holiday as a chance to overwork these children. What we need to do is we are teaching them mm -hmm. how to be self-reliant, uh, self-sustainable. Of course, uh, supposing something happens tomorrow, you're not around, mm -hmm. or you've fallen sick, uh, the house help has gone, what is mm -hmm. going to happen in the house? But we shouldn't take this as an advantage to pump these kids with a lot of work because they have also come back home with holiday package. Yes. We don't have to let them again forget books completely. Mm -hmm. So it, I think the best thing to do is we, we really need to, 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 to draw a timetable mm. that when you wake up, uh, you do ABC. Like, like I've just told you, mm. give them one thing to do at a time. Mm. If someone wakes up and their duty today is to clean the compound, I don't think they'll sweep the compound the whole day. Let them sweep the compound, yeah. uh, get breakfast, and then mm. get to their books for like one to two hours, 
and let them free. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, you actually highlighted on the issue of holiday package. Now, yes. Miss Millie, mm -hmm. we do know that um, of recent, so many schools give uh, their students holiday package. Yes. Now, how do we handle the issue of holiday package? Before um, you come in, um, because I have noticed there is a child that's like our neighbor. I'll bring in this um, this example. Mm -hmm. And what happened is, you know, they broke off school on 25th of November yes. and 26th of November, mm. they were starting off with their holiday package. They mm. haven't had time to rest. Remember, they were or, um, a week earlier, they were doing exams before, yes. mm. and now immediately they are starting on holiday package. Mm. What is the right way to go about holiday package so that we do not exhaust the children with schoolwork when yes. they should be on holiday? Mm. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, I think with this part of holiday package, uh, we as parents, we should give our children time to rest first. Mm. Like they, they were given homework, they, they broke off on 25th. Mm. I think you have to give them some time to relax because they have been loaded at school mm. with books. Uh, they wake up so early. Like if it is time for holiday, you first give them a rest. And then after, because I know the all subjects are there. Yes. And uh, like after some time, maybe they can start their holiday package uh, pa uh, in, in bits. But some parents want them to sit and write from the first page to the last. It, to, to make sure they finish, like, <laughs> let's say there is English. Yes. Mm. The, a parent may want a child to finish English in one day. Mm. That's not right. I think I'm a mother. Mm. I also have children. They came with holiday package. But what, we, what they do after doing some work in the house, then they will, after doing that work, there is time for their holiday package, at least 30 minutes to an hour, because this is a long holiday. So they take some time for their package. Mm. And by the way, when they take a short time in their books, they, they will do it when they like it. You're not forcing, but they do it uh, yeah. on their not yeah. on their pace, basically, yeah. but they will do it when they like it. Yeah, willingly. Yes, yeah. you're not forcing them, but they do it willingly. Mm. Yeah, they will I do that, that for a short true. time. Yeah. They will relax. And I think it is okay for all our children also to break and have to watch something on TV. Yes, oh, now, yes. that is where I, I, excuse me, let me mm. add on this. Mm. Uh, yesterday I had a scenario because mm. uh, I have uh, a senior four yeah. boy now. He has gone to senior four, actually, mm -hmm. Alvin. So, uh, but he always complains math disturbs him. Mm. So we got him uh, a teacher <laughs> to be helping him. At mm. least they meet twice a week. Mm. But yesterday uh, I realized like the whole day he hadn't gotten into his books. Mm. Uh, so I asked him, I'm like, Alvin, so what happened? <laughs> He's like, what is it, mommy? I'm like, today I've not seen you in your books. You've not done anything. Like, you've not opened your books today. Then mm. he's like, but mommy, I think you people need to tone down. This is why you're pushing us into these books. It's like, mm. ah, this December, really, you should leave us December. It, it oh. is Christmas season, and mm. I, I don't see why you are over pushing us. I, I, I start feeling like I'm the dumbest in class, the way mm. you're pushing me into books. Yeah. And I'm like, really? It's like, yeah, I don't think any of my friends is reading this December. I don't mm. think people are opening books. Then he also quotes uh, an example of a neighbor. He's like, you think those guys, uh, there's a, a boy called Nico, his age mate. He's like, you think mm. that Nicos are reading? Yesterday I asked them and they're like, no, not this December. Mm. Yes. Mommy, really? Okay, let me meet that teacher twice a week. But this holiday, I'll do, I'll do the work. Just mm. give me this December. So. Mm. Uh, I'm like, okay, so this is what the kids feel. Yeah. I think parents, if you can learn from that, because uh, I'm also one of these parents who is like, don't relax a lot. At least every day I want them to look at the books. Mm. 
Mm. But given that scenario yesterday, I'm like, okay. So when I over push them, they feel uh, I'm pushing them. It's like they're the dumbest in class, but they are yes. not. It's like, yes. but mommy, was my report so bad? I'm like, no, your report wasn't bad. Mm. So why do you push me so much? It makes me feel like I'm the dumbest in class. Yes. Mm. So I had to get some breaks. Mm. <laughs> so I think it's, uh, the yeah. bricks are very much helpful and especially yeah. if uh, kids broke off on the 25th, yeah. mm. it's only right that you at least give them a week yes. to relax and you know get mm -hmm. off the school stress off their mind, off mm. their head and then maybe in the next week they can resume yeah. to have at least an hour or two yes. you know doing revision or if they have um, yes. tutors just like you mentioned. So let's get on to the issue of talent. Mm. Uh, so many children have been gifted naturally. Some are good dancers, some are good singers, some mm. are good footballers, mm. and some are really invested in their talent. Mm. I know of children who every evening after class, if they're in boarding school, you'll find them on the pitch. Mm -hmm. They want to play football. Mm. If they are back in holiday, they will always be you know, playing football because they love that. Maybe they're very much talented in that area. Mm. However, we have seen some parents um, downplay children's talents yes. especially parents who want their children to be academic academically excellent mm -hmm. they want them to get the s which is not a bad thing mm -hmm. but they feel like when a child is spending time on the pitch spending time listening to music or dancing yes. then they are taking off time um on you know reading mm -hmm. and uh, working so hard for those grades so how can we develop our children's talents without you know slacking academically but yes. also excelling at both you know academics but most importantly developing and supporting their talent as parents yeah mm -hmm. thank you now when it comes to talent um i would think parents should take time and talk to their children because mm -hmm. these these kids have talents mm -hmm. like uh, as pink b we have gone to schools and we have talked to these kids one on one a child comes out and tells you by the way, Auntie, I can sing. I can really sing. I feel I can sing so well. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm at school and I sing, my friends praise me a lot. Mm. But when I try to sing at home, Mommy tells me, please read books. Stop wasting time. There's nothing in singing. You should. But I think parents should take time and talk to their, parent, their, their children and find out what they can do. Because these kids have talents. You mm. find a child at home, they have a talent, let's say singing. Mm -hmm. But the only time mm -hmm. they can explore this talent is when they get to the bathroom. Oh, yes. Because that is when they feel like they are alone and they can do it. Mm -hmm. Just take your time as a parent. And whenever your child goes to the bathroom, listen to them. Even dancers, trust me. Mm -hmm. I have a son who loves to rap. He loves to sing. He has talked to me about it, but I've always encouraged him to fast read his books but of recent i i decided to tell him now i am going to explore on your talent i am ready to invest in your talent mm -hmm. but we have to agree we're making an agreement now we're bargaining you should accept that you should read hard and excel and he's like mommy if you're going to invest in this talent mm -hmm. i'm going to read so I'm like, okay, I think parents should do that. Because these kids have talent. These kids can kick the ball. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you will look at this uh, talent and think this is nothing. Because there are parents who are lawyers and what they want is their kids to be lawyers as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you can be a lawyer and also do something else. And you may want this kid to be a lawyer, yet really this is not what they want. They want to be a doctor. And doctors are not bad as well. Yes. Mm. Like, you may be a doctor and you want your child to be a doctor. But this kid is not a doctor. This, kids want, this kid wants to become a teacher. And what is wrong with being a teacher? Mm -hmm. You can let this kid be a teacher because, after all, you became a doctor because <laughs> you passed through a teacher's hands. So, yes. really, I, mm. I think we, we need to talk to these children. We need to yes. talk to our kids. We need mm. to counsel them. Uh, know what they want. Mm -hmm. know their talent but alongside okay we you, you talk to them you know they understand no yeah. kids of today are not like our times you know for us whenever whatever a parent says is right and and you don't answer mm. of course you don't debate with the parent mm. but today we can talk to these kids these children you, you when you get time and slow down and sit with your child and talk to them you'll realize 
there is a lot in this children that even us parents can learn. Yes, yes. absolutely. I agree. <laughs> I do agree. <laughs> yes. Now, Miss Millie, earlier um, we talked about, you know, house chores and mm. uh, making sure that our children are involved in the day-to-day -day activities yeah. in a home. Yeah. And But also we do know of a saying that goes... Um, Work without play makes mm -hmm. Jack a dull child, mm. which is very much, you know, evident in yes. our day-to-day -day life. Mm. So how do we make sure that our children, you know, much as they are taking part in the house chores, mm -hmm. how can they also have some playtime to you know, associate with their peers? How can we go about that? Thank you so much. Mm. Uh, as much as we want our children to help with housework, we have to create time for them to play. We have to create time for them to develop their talents. Myself, I have children. Mm. I didn't know they liked dancing. But because I've given them time, I've found out they like it, they do it well. So, and at the same time, if it is time for doing work in the house, they'll do it. Mm. And I give them time to sing. I give them time to dance. They dance. They dance for the Lord. Yes. Mm. That's very good. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, from actually, there... Um, sorry. Mm. Um, you find out eh, mm. when you talk to these children, mm and you actually uh, okay them on their talents. Mm. I'm telling you, you will not shout with them. Mm -hmm. Just tell them, yes, okay, I know you love singing, mm. you love dancing, mm -hmm. but there are also books, and then we also have to help in the house. Yes. They will even draw a timetable for themselves. Exactly. Mm. Trust me, you mm -hmm. will wake up, mm. and like, the, the, this way they make their programs, you will mm. wake up in the morning, and they're already up, and everybody's mm. on what they're supposed to do, and they want to do this thing well, so that you mm. don't make them repeat it. Yes. They will do this quickly, mm -hmm. and do it well, do yeah. it neatly and on time, because they want to save the time to go to their extras. Yes. yes. Mm. So I, I think we should not really parents should look at this. We mm -hmm. don't need to put these kids in kind of a cage or bottle or something mm -hmm. because they su you will suffocate them. We mm -hmm. should not suppress their mm -hmm. talents. These kids have talent. Um, and they also need time to play, you know? Yes. Every time you play and meet others, of course, with our supervision, we need to know. We don't just send them to other houses and then... We need to know where they're playing from and who they're mm -hmm. playing with, but we, we really need to let them go out and explore. Mm. Yes. That one is absolutely true because um, mm. when you do not really mind about who your children is as, uh, associate, are associating with, mm. sometimes they get to pick out those very bad character traits and mm. you know bring them into your home and later on when they go back to school. But let's <laughs> talk about the issue of television regulation. Now, over the past years, we have seen that very many parents are very keen on what their children watch on TV, which is mm -hmm. very important because yes. some of these programs are not age appropriate for our children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, they breed a lot of bad manners. Mm -hmm. And um, we've also seen also in regard to this uh, regulation, <coughs> some parents have, you know, allocated certain time. You know that you only watch TV between 5 p.m. maybe mm -hmm. and 9 and, and nine p.m. Mm -hmm. So how else, besides, you know, regulating them, besides, you know, putting uh, for them a schedule of when to watch TV, how else can we ensure that we regulate what our children watch, especially in our absence? Yes, thank you. Uh, in our absence, because mm -hmm. uh, we can't be in all places at the same time. Mm -hmm. yes. We have to work. Mm. But we also have to be mindful of, of what our children go through and what they do, what they watch. Mm. So I think with TV, these t televisions have parental guidance, parental control. Mm. I think we should utilize uh, that part. Control and you sit down and analyze which channels these children can watch, which channels have uh, uh, programs that uh, may not be good for our children. And I think we block those. Yeah, because you will not be home at all times, and mm. you 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 know how children are. Children are inquisitive. Children want to explore, mm. uh, and whatever we say they should not do, they will always ask why not. 
if I do it, what will happen? Yes. So this will happen to the channels as well. You'll tell them, no, now, I don't mm -hmm. want you to watch this channel, this channel, it's okay to watch TV, but you can watch this and that. They'll always ask themselves, why not the other? So when you're not around, that is mm -hmm. the time they will say, ah, let's try out, what is he? That mm -hmm. mommy doesn't want us to, see, to watch. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can just sit down and talk to them and like teach them, go through, you tell them, okay, now this program, yes, mm -hmm. it is a good program, but it is not of your age. If you mm -hmm. watch it now, ABC can happen. And you're making them more inquisitive. No. To know what is it that's, 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 that's um, why am I being restricted because it's not age appropriate. Don't you think that makes them more curious to find out? Because even if sometimes they don't watch it from your home, if mm -hmm. you, you know you've blocked some of the stations, yes. they could watch it from their friends' places. Yeah, that also happens. But this comes back to uh, being free and talking to them and discussing. Because, mm. you know, when, whenever you sit down and wind up the day, we don't just go home and sleep. I know we come back when we are tired. Mm. But it is very good when your children are at home, once you retire home and you're all there. Before you go to bed, discuss mm. about your days. Mm. Discuss about what happened in the day. Just mm -hmm. ask them randomly, eh, so yeah. how was the day today? Yeah. Uh, and you also tell them, eh, me, I got into jam, this happened. So mm. how was your day? Mm. And they will talk. Yeah. Sometimes they will say, ah, I was at that house. Mommy refused us to watch this channel. You mm. know, as you talk somehow, they mention it even sometimes unintentionally. Yeah. They are not intending to say this, but from nowhere they will mention, and you will know. So when they go this side, they... If you can talk to those parents, mm. you can talk to them and share as parents and say, you know what, this channel, me, I don't encourage kids to watch because of ABC. Mm -hmm. I think you should also do the same. So that way, you will help each other parent well, your children. Okay, yeah. now the issue of TV, I think very much exhausted. But now, Miss Millie, let's mm -hmm. talk about um, the issue of gadgets and social media. Now, we are living in a very woke world, if yeah. I should call it that. Yeah. And... Um, so many parents have availed their children gadgets from mm. phones to iPads to whatever it, whatever it is that they need. Mm. And also most of them are actually on social media. Yeah. So how can we regulate how much our children consume in regard to, you know, what they pick off social media and the gadgets they use? Thank you so much. Uh, what I want to say about the social media. Mm. Uh, these days we've loved our children, we've given them phones, uh, we've given them computers. But we as parents, which is not bad. Yes. I, could, uh, I think, like, if you have children, like, at from 12 and above, hmm. I think it is okay to have a phone, as long as you monitor what he or she is doing with a gadget. Uh, my daughter has a phone. What I always do, I sometimes go through her messages. Like, if I find something not okay, hmm. then I'll ask, what is this? Hmm? But in a, a friendly way, and uh, I think she also use it mindfully. Mm. She won't, because she, she knows mommy will go through my phone. Uh, so I think we shouldn't avoid giving our children gadgets. Yes. It is okay. Mm. But we should monitor them. We should monitor them. Yes. Okay. Amazing. On the mm. issue of monitoring, mm -hmm. and this is to you, uh, Ms. Jemima, mm. on the issue of monitoring, some children mm. will say that you are encroaching on their privacy. Now we know that they are our children, we probably gave birth to them or adopted yes. them, mm. but they also have a right to privacy. You know, to having a life to themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you are micromanaging them, you have bought them a gadget, mm -hmm. and yet you are going through their messages, you're going through their phone calls, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. literally micromanaging them and mm -hmm. encroaching on their privacy. So mm -hmm. how do parents go about this? To ensure you are, moni while you're monitoring your children mm -hmm. and what they are doing, you are still, you know, giving them the privacy that they deserve. Yeah, thank you. Now, 
it it is it is really a tough one mm. because um you cannot deny these kids these gadgets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now given um g given the new curriculum it also uh necessitates for them to have these gadgets. These mm -hmm. children need to have these phones, actually, and it is a smartphone. Mm -hmm. um, now, on monitoring, I think the best thing to do is, uh, when, when you give them this phone, you mm -hmm. talk. Now, yeah, you have this phone because uh, we need to communicate. Sometimes I need to get you people and know mm -hmm. what is happening at home. And yeah. uh, if, if they're out of home with the phone, you need to know, are they safe? Are they, no, like you give them the positive bits. Mm -hmm. Now, when it, uh, then it comes to going through these phones, uh, I don't think it would be nice to uh, let them know you're going through the phone. Mm. What I think we would do is, because that is what personally I do, when my kids have the phone, mm -hmm. I sometimes um, tell them my phone is down. Oh. And I need, okay. to, I, 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 need, uh, I need to do something. So I, I'm like, please, may I have your phone? Can, mm -hmm. can I use your phone? My phone has a problem and I need to do this. Mm -hmm. So when they get me that phone, of course, I'll, I'll, I'll do the check in my own time, like, excuse me, I need to make an, an, an important call, but my phone is down, uh, please give me your phone. So I go to my bedroom and mm. do whatever I need. Mm. Then whatever I'll find out that is astray, I'll, 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 I'll look for a way of talking. Mm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you come out not direct, why are you doing this, why are you doing this? so I saw this on your phone, and you don't mm. even let them know you, you saw it in their phone. You, you, you bring it as an example, like you saw something or some parent was talking to you about what their child was doing and then, yeah. Hmm. Because, mm -hmm. because then because I feel like- Because these kids are sensitive. Yes, and if kids you directly tell them now. that, yeah. you know, I saw this on your phone, mm. I mean, the next time they'll press the delete button. If that they were, is you it. know, sending some messages that are not appropriate, they will mm. delete and you won't even find a thing. Mm. Yeah, and but I've also learned putting um, passwords. passwords. Well. Yes. Mm. You will ask for the phone and you'll not be able to do anything with it. Mm -hmm. yes. Because everything has a password. You can't get anywhere. Trust mm -hmm. me, children today, they are very mm -hmm. smart and <laughs> very, very, very smart. I must tell children you. are very smart yes, and but very sensitive. Okay, so yeah. as we finalize on the issue of gadgets and social media, mm. um, there's been a debate on what is the right age to give your children phones or gadgets. Now, I remember for me back in the day, the first time I got my first phone, I got my first phone when I was 18, and that one when, when I was going for my senior sex vacation. Yes. And that was the standard in our home, in our mm. family. Mm. But we see now, some children are getting given as young as three, four, five, five for mm -hmm. as long as they know how to use it, yes. they, you know, they are given these phones. But what mm -hmm. is the right age to give our children phones or gadgets? Uh, to me, honestly, yeah. I would think the best time to give these children phones would be um, given the times, mm -hmm. 16, like from 16 years, that would be at least the best time to give them phones. Otherwise, mm. it would mm. be 18. But mm. given the times now, mm. I think 16, but whenever we're giving these kids these phones and availing these uh, gadgets to them, we need to talk to them. Not once, but continuous talking and you no know, counseling and guiding here and there. Mm. Yeah. Okay, 16. Okay, okay. But <laughs> also 16, I think there's a time when they are mostly very active because that's puberty age. It's yes. like the, the worst, you know, the worst age. It so is like the worst. Yes. Yeah. Trust me, Agi. Hmm. This kid may not go beyond 16 without a phone. Well, that may be getting it for themselves. Mm -hmm. Or oh, getting give it, it for them. themselves if you don't give it to them. That is why I'm saying, given the times, at mm. least 16, we okay. can give them this phone. But with guidance, of course. Okay. <laughs> Miss Millie, what would be the right age <laughs> in your perspective? Uh, to me, the right age will be, it will be 18. 18. But mm -hmm. not to these days. <laughs> okay. Because you find their schools, which uh, those people will send, like holiday work, homework, using phones. Phones, yes, yes. Um, 
your computer. Yes. So you find you can't avoid it. You will find a primary child, P4, using a phone because he has to get his work or her work from the phone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these days we can't avoid it. Okay, yes, um, mm. yes, and the issue of um, giving them the phones to take mm. them to school, and we're talking about personal phones, no, to mm -hmm. have them at school. I'm not okay with children going with these phones to school, because mm. uh, I deal with children. Mm. Personally, I, I run a school shuttle. These parents give children phones to go with to school. I don't think it is the right thing, honestly, to do, because... Mm. You, you're not there. Mm -hmm. Yes. To monitor And then that. Mm. even us adults, mm. you know there are times you, you're supposed to do something, but you're overtaken up by this phone. You've gone on WhatsApp and you've met messages and what. I mean, these things are addictive. Mm. How sure are you this child will go to school and concentrate with this yes. phone? Mm. They have the phone. Most children even ask for excuse to go to the washrooms. Mm. And then they take 20 to 30 minutes. They are out there, mm. really, with the phone. Because mm. they will not excuse themselves without the phone. They always move out of class with the phone in the pocket. And by the time 20 to 30 minutes are gone, that is a lesson gone. Mm. How will this child concentrate? So with me, I'm not really okay with children going to school yeah. with the phone. Okay. No. Yeah. Mm. okay, okay. Yeah, but some <laughs> schools in Uganda, especially um, international schools, it's mm. kind of inevitable for children or you know students to go with their phones at school but let's uh, close the issue of uh, yeah. of phones and gadgets mm -hmm. now on um, the issue of holiday package now some parents have taken it upon themselves to be helpful mm -hmm. because that's what they say mm -hmm. um, you know children come with holiday package at home and you know they never get to do a thing um, mm -hmm. whether it's English social studies whatever it is the parents <coughs> do all the work for them or they could actually pay someone, or maybe it could be their sibling, you know, who does that work for them. Is it something right? No. That is definitely not right from the word go. Mm -hmm. It is not right at all. Now, if I do for this child this homework, holiday package, and then mm -hmm. they take it done, why wouldn't I go to class and study for them? Mm -hmm. I mean, why are you sending them to school and then you're doing the holiday package for them? You're doing mm -hmm. this work for them? You're paying someone to do? So I think uh, why teachers give these children holiday package and homework is for you as a parent to also follow and, 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 and see what your child is doing, for you to evaluate mm -hmm. your school fees. Now, if you get into doing this for them, you can mm -hmm. as well go to class and, I mean, sit for them because... Mm -hmm. Why would you do work for the, your children? When would you know that this child is capable? Mm -hmm. uh, and when would you realize your child has a weakness here and there? I think this holiday work should always be done with the children. Okay, a parent comes in to help, not bad, mm -hmm. but not doing it for them. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes they get into questions that are a bit broader for them or harder or what. Mm -hmm. You can come in to explain or the elder siblings can help them out but not writing for them, mm. not doing it for them, yeah. Okay, yes. now, okay, that, that has been very much exhausted, but let's now focus on the issue of rest. Because we'll say that the most important reason why children, you know, have holidays is because they, you know, have some rest of, you know, school work because mm. they've been waking up for morning preps. They have, you know, chores that they do at school and mm -hmm. then, you know, mm -hmm. uh, extracurricular activities. I think that's what they call them. Mm. So when it's time to go home, it's, you know, time to have, you know, some rest, some longer hours of sleep, you know, yes, alongside yes, other yes, things yes. that can help them rest. Mm -hmm. So, Miss Millie, how can we ensure that our children do mm. have enough rest? before they head back to school for the next you know semester or term thank you so much uh, I would think like when they are at school or it's uh, it's not holiday uh, they wake up so early around four they are up but when it is time for holiday they are at home they can wake up at six. Uh, I think this is the time for parents to pray together with our children mm. at that time. After that, 
they do some work mm -hmm. in the house. Then they will get time to rest, to relax. After that, maybe they, they can go start their holiday package mm. for some one hour. Then you give them time to play around with their friends, but still with you, mo with you monitoring, hmm. not allowing them to go out, because at least you keep, you keep an eye. Hmm. Uh, who are they playing with? I think we should give some time. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, as much as we are looking for money, we should also give some time to our, to our children, to our children right? during mm -hmm. holidays. Mm. Now, one of the aspects of um, rest during mm. holiday, mm -hmm. I remember even back in the day, some of us hated it. Our mm. parents wanted <laughs> us to sleep during the day, especially after lunch. You have, mm. you know, one hour to rest after mm. having lunch, mm. and then you have to sleep for the next two hours. We used to fight. We didn't yeah. want to sleep during the day. So mm. let's talk about the issue of, you know, that daytime rest, uh, because so many children are very much resistant to eat. But how mm. helpful is it? Um, that daytime rest is mm. very helpful, mm -hmm. but my friend, nobody likes it. Personally, we used to be caned to sleep after lunch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you would of course stay in bed, but you don't sleep. Mm -hmm. When they go away, you start playing inside there and what. But I think uh, even as an adult, mm. that, that, that small rest is always there. That small nap, I mean, that, that time for nap is needed. Um, personally, mm. I've been uh, forcing kids to sleep in the afternoon but i'm telling you it is toxic it is disturbing it's toxic okay like you will you will shout mm -hmm. you have to be prepared to mm -hmm. shout you have mm -hmm. to be prepared to always be there for them to rest because when mm -hmm. you're not there trust me they will not mm -hmm. they will not so um, you just need to talk i mm -hmm. think talking has helped a lot personally talking has helped me a lot as a parent you just talk to them and tell them uh, what, 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 what good is in, is, is, is in sleeping at that time. Why should they rest? Like I even tell them, no, you, you really don't need to go there and like close your eyes and sleep, sleep, sleep. Mm -hmm. Just go lie down and rest. rest. If sleep takes you, good. Sleep off and then you will wake up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You just find them going by themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it's also the aspect of discipline comes in because I know of a child mm -hmm. who is in primary two and trust me, they know that every time I'm done with lunch, I'm going to bed. Their parents don't have to say a thing. Mm -hmm. The maid doesn't have to say a thing. So mm -hmm. I think they instill the sense of independence in this child and discipline that she knows what she needs to do at yeah. what time. Mm -hmm. But now that we are running out of time, um, what is Pink Bee Foundation doing um, to support children during this long holiday? Yeah, during this hol long holiday, what we're doing is um, we, we go to children we have interacted with and then we, we always meet them one in a time. We collect them and then we do routine trainings in whatever they like to do. Hmm. We also mentor them and counsel them as they're in holidays. And then uh, we have also started a program of uh, making uh, reusable pads so we are actually involving the girls and boys into uh, hands-on skills so mm -hmm. that is what we're doing right now because as we're going to visiting schools we found out most girls have challenges in this so as as we're counseling and mentoring we also give out pads Mm -hmm. But uh, we found out in the long run, they are expensive. We can't be buying them all the time and giving out. And of course, once you go to this school today, mm -hmm. after like a, a month is when you'll go back to that school. Mm -hmm. Of course, that child would have already used the pads. Maybe they're not even enough for them. A packet, of course, is not enough for a child. And being that we, we, we don't have sponsors, we don't have funders, we, we do this from our own small, small monies here and there, the salaries mm -hmm. and what we put it together to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit hard, so we've resorted to making the reusable, reusable pads. Yes. Uh, and now we are involving these kids into that, uh, just impacts their scale mm -hmm. and also help us out with uh, the, the issue of uh, 
uh, uh, uh, pads and problems. That's, with that's very much um, commendable work. I know for sure that so many young ladies out mm. there, especially in Uganda, mm -hmm. are really suffering when it comes yes. to that time of the month because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they and their parents cannot afford, you know, um, mm -hmm. buying sanitary pads. Mm -hmm. But also even the issue of, um, of the reusable ones, I would say that uh, much emphasis needs to to be put on uh, how they can employ, you know, sanitary measures on how to keep them because, you know, yes. that's that they are very sensitive. Mm -hmm. And of course, some of them live in areas where water is not very much accessible. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another issue that, but then we'll talk about it. You, you yeah, have some it is, it, about that, it? that is another issue because as we talk to these children, yeah. we discuss and we talk and they, they tell us their challenges. Mm -hmm. So we also explored that area. We mm. talked to them how to keep them clean, how to, you know, and we were really trying so hard to explore on the materials yes. that mm. are, 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 are better because yes. uh, we can't just use any material. Mm. We have to use materials that are easy to clean, mm. materials that will not need a lot of water. Yes. Yeah. Okay, now we're really running out of time, but um, I would love to get your final remarks and I'll start with you, Miss Millie. And uh, now that we are going, the kids are on a very long holiday. Mm -hmm. Yes, they go back to school next year in February. Word of advice for parents out there as you give us, you know, your final remarks. How can they help their children to have a productive holiday this year? Thank you so much. Uh, my advice to the parents. I would advise parents to give time to their children. Mm -hmm. However much we are looking for money, we are looking for school fees, we are looking for money to take care of our children, we should give time to our children. Yes. Children need us, they need our time. So I'm encouraging my fellow parents to give mm -hmm. time to our children. Okay. Be uh, there for them, hmm. love them, and take care of them. All right. Thank you so yeah. much. Uh, mm. Ms. Jemima, your final remarks. Uh, my final <laughs> remarks would be to my fellow parents. Mm. Uh, first and foremost, we need to come down and become friends to our children. All these issues we've talked about become very easy once mm. we talk freely with these children, once we bring them close, give mm. them time. Yeah. Uh, I know of parents who say, uh, I gave time to these children when they were young and they've grown up. So now they've grown up, there's a house help, they can be home. Mm. Please, this house help does not become a parent when your children grow up. Yes. They still need you. Mm -hmm. But most of all is be a friend to your child. Once you're a friend to your child, everything mm. becomes easy. All the things we talked about, sleeping during day and what, just mm. talk to them and tell them what is good and what is wrong, mm. and you just find everything fall in place. Thank you so much, okay. ladies, for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Mm. Um, one thing that I get from this discussion is the mm. fact that as a parent out there, you should know for sure that your child is your responsibility. You will have other people supporting you. Mm. It could be a maid, it could be relatives, but... Bottom line is your child is your responsibility and that is you ensure um, they are go growing up morally upright, academically upright, nurturing their talent and ensuring that they are good members of society. Well, um, we've come to the end of the show this morning. We've had amazing and great conversations earlier with Priva Elibas and then, you know, this conversation in regard to productive holidays for children. So, yes, I will wish every child out there an amazing holiday and also encourage parents to definitely be a part of their child child's you know children's lives rather so catch you next week on monday same time same place have a great weekend